Your personality is your public image. What people know you about. They know you as the one standing there in the past. They know you as the one that can spend money. They know you as the one that can dress very well. They know you as the one that can acknowledge people. That is your personality. But your character is who you are. Amen? Your character is who you are. Your character is different from your personality. Your personality is that one you want everybody to see when you go to the party. The one that is posh. The one that speaks like the British people. The one that when you are eating, you eat carefully. But when you are in your house, you break your pot. <laughs> but when you go out, there is what? Your personality. So you have a person. Because as Christians, you are so that we have personalities. We present the nature. We present some attitude as very holy. They go to our offices on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays. That's when we know who we are. It takes a little bit of favor and hard work for you to be an achiever in life. People that are billionaires and millionaires today do so by virtue of idea. Whatever stopped your father will not be able to stop you. Amen. Whatever stopped your mother will not be able to stop you. Amen. Somebody created traffic lights because there was need and he made money out of it. Somebody came up with the aeroplane to fly because there was need. Somebody just suddenly discovered that somebody was talking to a large crowd and people at the back were screaming, we can't hear you, we can't hear you. And somebody said, microphone is the answer. Have something running inside of you. Have something going through your brain. Sit down and ask yourself, how can I sell myself to my generation? Pastor's Wife Talk Show, a program designed by God to encourage you to live unshamed and free and to reign in Christ given that your past sins, pains and mistakes have been taken care of by the cross. This is a season where darkness is threatening our world, but we at the Pastor's Wife Talk Show are here to ignite and rekindle your fire and encourage you to shine light irrespective of the challenges and persecution. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. The enemy will never understand nor frustrate your going out and coming in Jesus' name. Watch us every Tuesday, 12 to 12.30, on Faith World TV, Sky Channel 589, or www.faithworldtv.com Your testimonies and financial support are welcomed. Contact us at Good News Bible Church, Unit 4, Westmoreland House, Scrubs Lane, NW10, 6RF. I prophesy the name of Jesus, and so it shall come to pass. Do not give up. It is not yet over. Your future is secure. God has your back. You will bounce back. You will bounce back. You will not remain down. You will be up. The Bible says that time and chance happen to them all. In life, there are seasons of life. There is time for everything on the face of the earth. At the right time, each one comes and this time. God makes all things beautiful in his time. And so I declare into your life, God will make all things beautiful in your time. This program is made possible by the Unstoppable Music Ministries and other financial partners. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're praise the Lord. We're praising Jesus. Praise your name. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We're blessing Jesus. Mm, the great I am. You are the great I am. You're Hallelujah. The great I am. Oh, yeah. We're going to praise your name. We're going to praise the Lord.
Lord Jesus. Hello, this is Pastor Chika Madi, and this is the Pastor's Wife Talk Show. It's my pleasure to uh, welcome you again today, and uh, I want you to know that God is said to bless you. I have a guest with me today, and we are going to discuss something that uh, impacts on each and every one of us, especially here in the UK, and in the whole wide world, as a matter of fact. And um, uh, it's, it's relating to situations happening in our, in our nation now. It, it seems as if our faith our Christian faith is under attack, heavy attack. But we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. God, uh, the scripture, we were warned already in the scripture that such a time will come. But what do we do as believers? Are we just going to sit back and let the enemy have his field there? Field there, sorry, no. We have to rise up in different ways. But the Bible said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. If we don't know what is going on, how do we fight? How do we arise? So that's why today we have in uh, in the studio with me uh, one of my brothers. I've known him for some time now, since 2000 and 
17 yeah i've known uh, brother john he's a minister of the gospel he loves jesus but he stands up for things that matter to us in this nation and also matter to our faith so i'm here with uh, our my brother brother john o'neill brother john thank it's you. my pleasure to welcome you thank here you today. Pastor, my, pleasure to be here thank you very much for welcome. inviting me oh thank you. thank you yes so as you know we are going to be discussing issues relating to our faith especially yeah. uh, what we are seeing going on in our nation yeah. right now a lot has been going on uh, handling the attacks against the church mm. there are a lot of attacks that have been uh, going on in the church what should be our response how should we respond against the aggression our faith is facing in the united kingdom so i, I want to ask you brother john mm. you know a lot going on what mm. must we do we have the abortion issues we have the lgbt issues we have the children indoctrination of our children right now yeah. what should be our response as believers well i think the bible makes it clear pastor chick if we yeah. look at um ezekiel 3 18 ephesians 5 11 mm. romans 15 2 you know that we must speak out okay. we must not be silent okay. you know and I think that's uh, a big problem today because uh, uh, many many uh, Christians don't speak out okay. and therefore the, we get all this kind of uh, humanistic anti-godly legislation so it's vitally important that we, we do speak out mm. you know we must speak out amen praise God you know brother John what I notice is that believers uh, are, what are scared or afraid um, mm. of the effects if they speak out mm. if we look at in the uh, acts of the apostle uh, who showed us the way they suffered for jesus mm. yeah. even before now even mm. right even in our generation if you go to countries like pakistan even nigeria a lot of other countries mm. christians suffered for their faith mm. but believers in this country we are so scared we are so afraid mm. so how can we speak out when people are afraid well, I think, I mean, you know, Jesus said, didn't he, uh, Pastor Dick, if we're lukewarm, we yeah. spit you out, you know. Yeah. So I think, you know, the other disciples were boiled in oil. They were fed to the lions, but yeah. they didn't, they didn't, you know, they didn't hide. Yeah. So I think it's really a case that we have to just have courage, put our faith in the Lord and and take take responsibility mm, you know? especially so we have to put our faith because um, I believe one thing that God wants us to bring the life of heaven to this earth. Yeah. The life of heaven, life of righteousness, right? life of peace. Uh, God wants us to bring it into our nations and into our homes. But if we don't speak up, what will happen? Now, we must be aware also of who we are. Mm. If we are not aware that mm. who the, the, he that is in us is greater, that mm. God with us is mighty, mm. we'll be scared. Mm. Now, um, I, want, I want you to uh, go deep into what we are talking about. Like, I know one area that you are always talking about is all this sexual revolution going on right now. Even yeah. government has taken over. Yeah. So, yeah. what do you have to say? Well, the point is, Pastor Ticker, that um, this, when I was a boy, this was a Christian country. Okay. And the, uh, the divorce rate was very low. Okay. Uh, sexual transmit... Yeah, uh, Teenage pregnancy very low. Yeah. It was taboo. Actually, Peter Dobing, mm. a Manchester City footballer, was getting divorced in 1961. Yeah. It was so unusual. Wow. It was headlines in the local paper. Wow. So what happened, Pastor Chick? In yeah. the early 1960s, where the homestead called Roy Jenkins, mm -hmm. he was called the father of the permissive society. Oh, father of, of the, the permissive society. society. Yes. Wow. That's when they legalized abortion, homosexuality, got rid of censorship, amoral sex education in, in schools came about and also uh, uh, di divorce was made much easier. Okay. Since that time, we've had a tenfold increase in crimes and enormous increase in social problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, in, in fact, years later, Jenkins was asked what he thought of the permissive society. Okay. He didn't answer because you know why, Pastor Chica? Yep. He knew it was an unmitigated total disaster. You know, Pastor Chica, mm -hmm. There's a, there's a study, Professor J.D. Unwin from Cambridge University, okay. he did a study in the 1940s mm -hmm. of 88 civilizations. Okay. What he found out was whenever there's widespread promiscuity, yep. premarital sex, infidelity, yep. and same sex relation, within three generations, the whole civilization was wiped out. Mm. So the, the bottom line is, yep. uh, Pastor Chica, yep. also his, similar studies, Arnold Toynbee, around historian. Mm. No society in history has been able to survive for long without a strong moral code. Mm. The bottom line is that those 
laws from Almighty God. Once yeah. we once we go out back on well, there's the, there's there's the thing, Pastor. Yeah. There, there's the evidence. Yeah. There is the hard evidence. Also, another thing, Pastor. I'll say, yeah. I'll say also. By the way, yeah. this is very important. Yeah. In they got rid of the death penalty mm. in the early nineteen in, in that time of, of Jenkins, okay. and they said, what will happen? Okay, we, we'll get rid of it, but life will mean life. Mm. What does it mean now? Yeah. Ten years? Who knows? It's a joke. It's a sick joke. So <clears throat> again. The last, you, you go poll, Pastor Chick, about yeah. the death penalty. 51% yeah. of the people said they want it still to be there. 60% oh, okay. said for child killing and police officers, 60% want the death penalty. Mm. But what do these parliamentarians do? They mm. just ignore it. Mm. You see, Pastor Chick, yeah. Pastor, it's not a case as Christians. We want people to go. But when people are behaving, you know, Pastor, you've seen mm. it yourself, Pastor Chick. Mm. The, the, the knife crime, listen to any of the testimonies, it's dev one Kentish Town father summed it up, Pastor Chick. He yep. said, people who commit these kinds of crimes, they simply don't understand the devastation they cause. Yes. And what do they get? What do they get? Some get manslaughter. They get about mm. eight years. They're after up to four years. Yep. And even if some, they get so-called life. Yep. So, again, Almighty God makes it very clear in the Old Testament, Pastor Chick, mm. that for those, death the penalty is there. Mm. It's there, and Jesus said, didn't didn't say he came to change the law. Mm. He never he never said he came to fulfill the law. Yeah, he, he never he never he never went against the death penalty. He never he, ne he never said in the new he never said we should get rid of it. No, because it was it was there. He didn't need he, 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 you know it was there in the Old Testament, and mm. it, it wasn't changed. Yeah, but 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 John, the issue of death penalty. I think why a lot of people don't want that is to give people opportunity to repent because anybody sure. can repent. So, but I believe that issue of life should be life, isn't it? Like yeah. um, um, in, in sentencing. Yeah. It shouldn't be so lenient. Is that what you're trying to say? Absolutely. Well, again, to refer, with the death, myself, Pastor Chick, yeah. I, I agree entirely mm. there should be rehabilitation. Absolutely. But yeah. the point is for heinous crimes, yeah. these are heinous crimes. Okay. You're taking, this, the young men, they're just children, some of them. Yeah. I'm talking about heinous crimes. My personal belief is yeah. for heinous crimes, it does say in the scripture, I'm talking about heinous crimes, yeah, not okay. every single crime, yeah. but heinous crimes, yeah. child killing, those yeah. kinds of things. Those kind of thing, I believe it should be it's because mm. the point is, Pastor Chicken, yeah. not just to make them suffer, mm. but because people will see if we commit these heinous crimes, it's for their sake to stop them doing it, okay. as well as to punish those who commit the crimes. Okay. Make to make it crystal clear. If you go over this mark, yep. this is what you. And I'll tell you what. I, I've person myself, Pastor Chicken, I'll tell you this in all honesty. Mm. I've not got one iota of doubt. If that was brought back now, the mm. knife crime would stop overnight, virtually. It would stop overnight because okay. these are these are children. Some of these. Yeah. They're all because oh, bro. Oh, you're not from here, bro. Here, take that, bro. Mm. What is it? What yeah. is it? Because mm. they're, these these on sorry these mm. humanistic liberal. You know, politicians we have anti-godly policies yeah. and legislation. Mm. That, that's why. That's why the whole all these things are there. Yeah. Okay. So, but John is saying that uh, there was a time in this country where there was um, a Christian uh, ethos was prevalent. It, it, it was prevalent. Yes, and we did not have this high no. level no. of crime that we are seeing today. The issue is we need to understand that we are in the age of deception. They, we are in the age of deception. For me, yes, brother, uh, brother John, you you say you see you say that it worked then. But for me, let me I would, yeah. Let me one thing, Pastor Chicken. Yeah. In those days, yeah. in those days, when the ethos was prevalent, yeah. criminals did not carry guns. Do you know why? Mm -mm. Because they would face the death penalty. They mm -hmm. didn't carry guns. Okay. So again, if you said to these, they, you see again, they've lost. They, you see, I, I hear. And I hear this from these politicians. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. We should rehabilitate. I'm talking yeah. about. I said. I'm talking about yeah. heinous yeah. crimes, Pastor yeah. Chicka. Okay. But then again, many times it seems it's all on the perpetrators, for the, not not the victims. Yeah. It's all about the you know trying. Of course, rehabilitate. Give them that chance. Yeah. On the other hand, what about the victims? Yeah. What about the victims? And yeah. many times those lenient slap on the wrist. It just exacerbates the suffering. Okay. Exacerbates the suffering. Yes, we. Um, yes, I believe that when people commit offence, they should they should be punished, uh, so that to deter other people. So, uh, well, this is a controversial area. The issue of um, um, death sentence. True, it is. It yeah, is. It's but then again, Pastor Chicken, yeah. that last Yugo poll, two thousand fifty-one percent said yeah. they want it. Okay. Because, but as I say, what you see in our streets, I, I one, one one mother from the. Uh, Forest Gate summed it up last year, Pastor Chica. Yeah, yeah. Her son was coming home from the West Ham football yeah. uh, game. Yeah. He got to his road and they say it was a mistaken knife, oh, yeah. oh, took his life. Yeah. The mother said, 
in my country, they would face the death penalty. Mm. They would face the death You're taking on, and Pastor Tick, you know mm -hmm. yourself, it's not just the mother and father, it's the mm. brother. It's devastating, like, that's what they say. These are heinous crimes, yes, heinous crimes. I understand, well, <clears throat> we'll keep on praying, especially this issue of crime. Christianity, we need to, we, we, if we get the morals right, if Amen. people begin to That's have right. that fear yes. of exactly. God, have exactly. the knowledge that life belongs to God, exactly. that life is sacrosanct, Amen. that life, one day, if they, somebody takes another person's life, they will be asked of it. I believe people will be deterred from killing others. So, well, we'll leave that for the politicians yes, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, to yeah. sort it out. Yeah. Now, our time is going so quickly, yeah. but I also want us to talk about the, a lot of things going on. We'll talk about euthanasia going yeah, on. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk about abortion. You see what has happened in Ealing Council. They have uh, stopped the yeah. prayers about yeah. abortion. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. and now they are trying to put abortion also in Ireland. And I know yeah. it's an area you always walk you, you have a lot you are doing in, yes, yeah. in that area. Well, do you know, um, Pastor Chick, yeah. uh, you know, if you, the, the heart is beating uh, uh, just a few days after the child is born, mm. the DNA is right there from the beginning. It's a human being. Okay. It is a human being. Okay. So again, um, uh, you know, the fact that they do this, it's a, a violation of freedom of conscience and religion. It's outrageous. Mm. It's basically outrageous. Yeah. That, um, and... Um, uh, you know, and also, by the way, pass the ticket. I've not yeah. got it. I can't. Sh but if you, if anyone, if anybody looks, I've got it on my my website. Yeah. If you look at what it does to the women who are, you see, the vast overwhelming majority of abortions, Pastor mm. Chica, mm. are for convenience sake. Yeah. I think it's something like ninety eight percent. Okay. That is the take of a life of an. Mm. Of a, that is the murder of a, of an unborn child. Okay. It's as simple as that. Yeah. You, you see, I say, you see, I've, I've got it here. You see the picture of the baby in the womb. Yeah. When you see it, it's developing. It's a human being. It's clearly a human being. So it's it is a... very wrong to allow people to just have abortion at any time, any time they want it, just for convenience sake. Let me so, just say yeah. this, Patrick. Yeah. Also, yeah. as I say, I've, I can't show you now, mm. but if you see, Patrick, I'm not. I'm this. Mm. The, 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 the downside mm. of aborting a child for the wrong reason is simply horrendous. Yeah. And I'm not using that word lightly. Yeah. Anyone that look, I, actually, this is from Christian Gunson, this wonderful moral group, Pastor Chica. Yeah. They have got all the, all the facts about the downside, what happens. It mm. is totally horrendous. Mm. And one thing, summed it up, one thing could sum it up, Pastor Chica. Yeah. I saw uh, an article in one particular newspaper, yeah. and this lady, this lady was a sister of the lady who'd had an abortion. She okay. said, before my sister had the abortion, she was fine. She had a steady mm. job, doing mm. very well. Once she had the abortion, then she was in and out of mental hospitals. Yes. Uh, it, it's now, I'm not saying that's in every case, Pastor Chica. No. But the point is, the point is, mm. these studies uh, that Chris Concern have, have, have documented, yeah. as I say, the mental issues from it, you know, all mm. kinds of uh, uh, harmful effects of it. Yeah. It's, it, you see, because it is the taking of an unborn child. It's a it, child. Exactly. It's an unborn child. But, uh, you know, I see, you know, so, just three things. I don't yeah. even. Okay, three things I saw in recent days. Yeah. One thing about this was yeah. you, how, can you, how can you even think people are human? It said in America, one abortionist, mm. the baby came out gasping for air. Mm. And what did he do? He cut the umbilical cord, mm. put it in a bag, and threw it into. Oh, no, that's horrendous. <laughs> well, no. well, you know, Pastor Ticker, yeah. what, what kind of society is this? And you know, actually, um, Mother Teresa said, Pastor Ticker, yeah. when we allow mothers to kill their babies in their wombs, we can't be surprised when people start killing each other. Wow. I'm not saying that's the all, all the knife crime, but when we allow all, we don't do anything, Pastor Chica. Yeah. We allow this evil, mm -hmm. this evil, I mean, people say it's like Moloch in the Bible, mm. so, the, so, so, uh, sacrificing children to Moloch, yep. you know. This is what this country's come to now. Mm. This country desperately needs Almighty God mm. again in the heart and soul of this country. Amen. This we, country. We've run out of time. But John, what do you think, uh, Brother John, what do you think we should do, believers, we should do? I think we should get into our prayers and we should get into government. Well, I think... The final abs word. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Well, for Pastor Ticker, yeah. St. Augustine says it all for me. Pray as though everything depends on God. Act as though everything depends on you. Amen. If we really kind of... That thing, God will move in mighty ways. Amen. God is said to move, but we must pray. Where there are a people to pray, there is a God to answer. Keep praying for this nation. Revival is coming back. This morality will surely come back. And the spirit of death going around must die in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry, that's all we have time for today. And until next week, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Uh, say bye.